Hey, it's Terry Bean. We got another fun episode of Business Growth Time coming up today. We're going to interview serial entrepreneur Dane Maxwell, and we'll get into him in just a minute. But before we do that, please welcome my good friend, longtime pal, social media maven, Facebook ads chick extraordinaire, <laughs> Janet E. Johnson, where today the E is going to stand for ESP. Not N, just ESP. So how you doing, Janet e. Okay, well, you got to explain more. What is this ESP thing? I don't know, man. I get the sense that our guest has this really extra sensory perception <laughs> thing going on. So you know me, I have a hard time coming up with E's 150 episodes into this show. So now I have to do like abbreviations or acronyms or whatever you want to call it. That's so cute. we're going straight up S. So, and maybe you've got a little extra sensory perception too, Janet e. Johnson. At this point, I don't think anybody does. At the, I don't know. <laughs> we, we, I wish I did actually at this point in our life, but so not fun. at this point. Well, well awesome. tell us about Dane. Tell us about Dane and how he got on our little show. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dane actually was introduced to me by a third party. So it was pretty cool. And Dane, you, I have to say you, for some reason, I think I've heard of you somewhere, somewhere along the lines and I don't have a clue why. Um, but I say we at this point say pretty much no to all guests and somehow you pass. So good for you. <laughs> so that's because we just get so bombarded by, by the guests, you know, requests. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. So I'm glad to have you. Definitely glad to have you. So let me give you a proper intro and then you can tell your own story. It's always best to hear it from you. But Dane Maxwell is a serial entrepreneur and he has taken his business from mere ideas to seven figure companies within a period of five, brief period of five years, very, very short time. He has gone on to create over 15 millionaires with his teachings. He specializes in helping underdogs start successful businesses. He's the author of the upcoming book, Start From Zero, which teaches entrepreneurs a new way to build businesses quickly without the risk from scratch. So once again, Dane, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now I'm interested to hear about this book and your story behind everything. I, I, I trust those kinds of things when they happen. Like if I get through the cracks and I come on a show, you know, maybe there's one listener <laughs> that really needed to hear my voice or maybe we needed to connect and I trust that kind of thing. I mean, I, I would start by saying that there should be no struggle in business. Now there, there are certain categories of struggle, but when we think of struggle, I really don't think there should be, you know, there are um, certain elements. Like if you're going after something super audacious, that might be kind of a struggle to get there, but that's a different struggle than the kind of the one that I'm talking about. The struggle that I'm talking about is like when things aren't working and, and business, business should always be working. Um, and the way that that works is when you let go of all of the ideas of how you think it should go and really just surrender to what actually works. Um, and when you do that, the, like if, if, if we have like, let's say three categories of people, you've got the solopreneur who thinks they have a business, but they're just a technician trading time for money. You've got the small business owner who kind of makes money when they're not working. Yeah, but they got to manage an employee and maybe the employee doesn't perform. And, and then you've got other folks where let's just say that things are in harmony. Like customers love the product, they're buying the product sales happen when the, when the business owner is sleeping, like how do we build a business that we don't have to work in? And that's what I really like to focus on is building business that we don't have to work in. And in order to do that, we, we got to remove our, our ego. Mm -hmm. we really, 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 really remove it. And, and I have to go through that process still all just, just like daily. Cause it's like, I've got my own ideas of what works, but that's not what will actually work. So I, I like to say that your struggle in business can stop the day that you truly start listening. So are you a data-driven guy or are you uh, are asking questions of the customer and doing the survey thing? When you say you start listening, listening to what exactly? I know a lot of gut-driven individuals, but I don't think that's what we're talking about, right? 
I'm so honored to have a voice on your show, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Terry, how's your day been today? It's been pretty sweet. It, it was, uh, it's been a little bit low key. It's got a Friday sunny feel to it. And uh, had a meeting with an old friend, drank some coffee and knew I was coming back to see you. Got a client meeting in an hour or two. So, I, but I, my days are always good, dude. I have an unfair advantage. I have a really good mindset. Wow. Um, you know, what I heard as I attempted to really listen to you is that you said your day is really sweet and that you got to have coffee with a friend and then that you get to come and have a conversation with me and then you've got a client meeting after that. But underlying all that is that every day is really sweet for you because you've got a, a good mindset. Active listening at its finest. I like that. Yeah. So now I'm also, as I'm listening, I'm also tracking in my internal experience um, how I can serve you, how I can help you. What are the kinds of things that you think about? Um, and I'm devoid of proving myself in this context. I'm devoid of impressing you. And I my body has a fear response because it's very intimate to listen, really listen. And it's like, well, I'm really getting to know a beautiful human being here right now. And like hearing me, my eyes are starting to kind of get wet because like this, this is connection. And this creates pretty amazing feeling in the moment and if I'm really listening to you, like I see a smile and I'm like, I'm feeling pretty connected to you. And, and there is a fear response inside my body at the same time that I'm allowing. Oh, maybe Terry will think I'm worthless. Maybe Terry won't like me. Maybe Terry will treat me the way that guys in high school did. You know, and it's like all those things. And those are all welcome within my experience as much as I can welcome them. Because none of that crap's going on in your head. That's all my yeah. own mind. That's all my yeah. own mind. <laughs> right. So I hold it as my mind, but here is what listening evokes. It evokes vulnerability because as a business owner, part of us would love nothing more than to have such an impressive idea that people are so impressed that they just want to buy from us. Like, Oh my God, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I got to give you my money. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Can I bow down to you? Thank you. Thank you. At least that's my world of it. Like as a business owner, we want to come up with this idea that everyone loves and buys, but in business, we don't get to decide what works and how deeply you rest into that is how deeply successful you can be. Cause if you really know, that you don't get to decide what works. Um, Terry, you said Janet does Facebook ads. Do you, do you get to decide if a Facebook ad works, Janet? I have a little power over it, but. <laughs> so there's a little power over it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we have to deal with the Facebook world, obviously, too. But, right, but... all the Facebook rules, they cl close the ad and whatever. But but do you, do you know with 100% certainty what's going to work when you launch an ad? Never. Never. So how many ads will you have to launch sometimes to find the winner? Oh, I mean, typically it's not too much more than maybe 20 or something like that. But Good God. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a good response by you. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so 20. So... Janet, you are embodying with your face. Like I, I would already want to hire you. I'd want to know what you're doing <laughs> just based on that alone, because you are actually embodying that you don't get to decide what works. You're like, and most of my most successful things I've ever done are let's do it and see what happens. Mm. And most of the stuff that hasn't worked out is when I've got this absolute certainty about it. I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this. I'm going to get this office location. I'm going to have this million. And none of that has ever worked. But when I was like, hey, let me launch this and see what happens. You well, know, it's like everybody comes to me and says, yeah. I know it needs to be video. No, not necessarily. Right. I, have we tested it yet? You know, that, that's the type of thing. Yeah. It doesn't mean it has to be video because video is working so great doesn't automatically mean that that ad is going to be the better option. 
I'm a, I'm a big fan of the ready, fire, aim approach, mm-hmm. right? Give it some thought, take some action, and then readjust on the fly. Um, but it's funny because in, in talking to Dane before we started recording, there was a there was kind of almost a different energy. You switched into like all of a sudden this Zen business philosophy guy, <laughs> um, and I and I love it, man. It's it's pretty cool. So like right. you're an interesting cat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> cat. continue this conversation. No well, I mean, I thanks. I mean, I could. Well, I'll I'll, wait. I'll, let, I'll let you guys have, have. If you want to ask a question, you can ask one. No, <laughs> go go respond. Go ahead. So. Um, I'm really trying to give myself permission to be great. And I find that to be far more difficult than to be worthless or ugly or not enough. And I'm like, okay, so I want to give myself permission to be great. So um, in that, for some reason in my unconscious, that means that nobody else can be great if I'm going to be great. That's how my unconscious maps. So I've got resistance to this, but now it's like, wait, I'm going to, I want to step in and give myself permission to be excellent. And now I want to help other people find that same permission in themselves to be excellent. And then we can all be excellent together and then all have an orgy in a Roman bathhouse. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) He said Janet was cute earlier, so now I, we're seeing where this. Well, is I mean, going. that was there was some context to this, Terry. <laughs> hey, that's true. We're that giving her true. a hard time. <laughs> Terry oh, loves God. doing that. Believe me, oh, uh, and he but loves so, to make me red. <laughs> so, <laughs> great. So, I mean, in terms of like permission in accessing like greatness, and it would be like so how do I take advantage of this gift of a mind that I've been given? Like, how do I really, how do I really love my mind? And reading great books, knowing my mind through journaling, right? Like with, with, with a hundred voices going on in my head, how do I center on the one that like really would make me feel the best and or is that even how it even works in the first place according to one of my mindset mentors no um but like so if i i'll give you guys i'll I'll, I'll go through three contexts and then when you listen to this i hope it gives you permission to i I want you to know that if you're struggling in business now you're not listening to your customer listen to them really listen to them they'll ask you for things that you're gonna you're you'll notice you'll notice like an almost automatic unconscious arrogance and it's not obvious arrogance it's like um, my, my friend, she sells, uh, teaches successful people how to get on YouTube. And she says, everybody asks her how to make money right away when they get on YouTube. And she's like, no, you can't do that. It takes two years to make money on YouTube. I was like, yo, 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 you're not listening. They're telling you exactly what they want. They want to make money fast on YouTube. But you're not. You're saying, no, no, it's got to be this way. This unconscious arrogance, and that's okay. And at the same time, it's really killing your income. So if you sat down for a day and asked, how can we make money fast on YouTube? Is there a system to make it possible? I'm pretty sure you probably figure it out. In one day, you probably figure it out. And then your business would explode. And she's like, actually, yeah, you could probably do this, 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 or this. Right? <laughs> and, and like my other, my, my, vo- my voice coach, when I was training for singing and albums and stuff, he, he had his, fa- his followers were asking him to do voice reactions on YouTube for years. They're like, we're, do a voice, listen to a singer, pause and talk about what the singer's doing. Do a voice reaction, please. He's like, blah, 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 blah. no way, it's stupid, it's boring. Blah, I'm not gonna do that. Unconscious arrogance. And there might even be a better word to it. It's just like pride, maybe, even pride. Like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go stoop to the, like whatever it is. Um, and then he does it. And his YouTube subscribers 10X in 90 days. Hmm. Like by listening, like he went 10 X growth by listening. So listening is like, I think can be pretty terrifying because you're like, okay, am I going to fail at giving the person what they're saying they really want? Do I have an idea that what they're asking for is impossible? Well, just remember Elon Musk is trying to go to Mars and then maybe listen. You know, <laughs> right. Good point. Digging a tunnel through LA because they need a tunnel through LA. Yeah. So 
I mean, like it, th this is the bit, so the business philosophy stuff. So in the, in the book that I've created, I used, I used to just turn my nose up at books. You know, I was like, now nah, I'm not going to write a book. <laughs> so much arrogance, pride. I don't know. It just felt like anger towards a book. I'm not going to waste my time with a book. Well, because when I know how to make money as easily as I do, a book's way too much work for me. Until That's my cool. heart started opening and I really wanted to help more people. And I realized how accessible a book is. And I, my, my heart switched way over into service as, you know, I think it just does as you age or whatever. But so <laughs> I wrote the book and um, it was grueling. And it, the book as it sits now today is seven different learning adventures. So you go on a learning adventure and the first learning adventure in the book is what's called the three little rocks. And you put those three rocks in your pocket and then you go on the next six learning adventures. And the final learning adventure is called the halls of transformation. And there's 15 different success stories of employees who are struggling that are now successful entrepreneurs. And there's 15 of them. You know, the editor's like, can you just maybe do five? I was like, no, absolutely 15. We don't want people to even have a chance at believing in scarcity anymore when they read that book. Cause it's one thing for me to come on and say, there should be no struggle in business. And you're like, dude, what are you talking about? Every day is a struggle for me, dude. What I'm telling you is you're probably not listening. You're really not listening. You're trying to do things your way. And, or you have this thing you love so much that you just want to work. And then that also can blind you from listening. But I tell you what, like there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's so much there's is so much pleasure in doing something that works like that works really well when stuff works really well it's it's a it's a very very pleasurable feeling and the other thing i want to mention is like if i before i forget this is that uh being successful what i'm trying to remind myself is that it's not personal it doesn't mean anything about me if i'm successful right and so can you expand there's, on that? What is that? Yeah. Yeah. There's, so there's certain aspects of like my identity that still identify as worthless. Mm, right. It's like, it. okay, I still, still aspects of my identity that identify as worthless and I don't have the metacognitive ability, the, ability, the, meta, the meta of higher level to watch my own cognition, metacognitions of term, but I don't have that metacognitive ability to watch my thoughts well enough yet to recognize a thought worthless. So if I can't see that thought and it's swimming around, then I'm going to start believing it. Then if I actually believe that I'm worthless, then I might be driven towards success to try to fix the sense of worthless. Um, and Taylor Swift's latest documentary was epic. And, you know, Kanye West bashed her on stage in 2008. And then she went on to achieve a feat that only, only the Beatles have done. Her and the Beatles are in their own category, four number one albums. And what drove her was that she wanted to feel like she belonged. And she wasn't sure if when people were booing on stage, if they were booing Kanye or booing her, she didn't realize the entire audience was booing Kanye. And when you've got the who's who of the music industry all in one room booing, ow. Mm. And yeah, talk about messing with your identity, right? Yeah. So ow. I don't know. I want to hearken back to something you said uh, about giving yourself permission to be the, uh, to be great or to yeah. be excellent. And, and what I love about that distinction, because I think so often, uh, the, you know, entrepreneurs as a rule seem to be fairly stubborn to me, right? You talked about the idea that we want to do things a certain way. We want to do things our way as opposed to listen. And, and that may turn into arrogance. But if you look at, I, I, I want to be excellent or I want to be great, um, that's no longer in the competitive field, right? You can have yeah. an abundance mentality if you're trying to be great or excellent, especially if you're trying to help others achieve the same. Whereas if your goal is to be the best, right, as opposed to being excellent or great, now you have to compete with other people, right? Well, yeah. You're looking at it from a really different perspective. So I love the idea of mm. excellence as a goal, um, as opposed to the best as a goal. And I, I really, uh, I want to make sure that there's a, that distinction is out there and clear. I think that's an important one. And I really thankful for you bringing that up. I, um, 
I want to compete against myself. Better than you were yesterday. So what would that take for someone listening and for me and for all of us to wake up and have our focus on competing against ourselves? If that was our orientation. The contentment is pretty nice. You know, and then like my focus only on competing against myself. Holy crap, the mental resources are available. And then you look at other people and you're not like, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on with the mind that we can't even, that I'm only becoming aware of that we can only track. And one of which is like, if we do have identities of feeling insignificant as very real, very worthless and very inadequate in entrepreneurship. A lot of us even like there can be a there can be a battle for many people's minds to to feel like they could even be worthy as an entrepreneur or belong as an entrepreneur or adequate as one. And I can dispel the mystery real quick. Um, the secret to success with entrepreneurship is to obsessively train. Hmm. Like you would anything else. It takes obsessive training. Like you, if you, you expect to pick up a guitar and play and sing a song without ever practicing. So why in the world would it be any different in entrepreneurship? Obsessive training is what will provide you the result in entrepreneurship. So worthlessness and significance and adequacy is really about doing the reps. Find the entrepreneurial skills that you can rep a hundred times until you got it in your bones. And I, and I have those reps. I know those reps are because we've, we've done a lot of it. But obsessive training is is the, is the, is the big ticket to like walking with wealth instead of having to reach for it in terms of success being personal. If success isn't personal, but parts of our identity will try to make it personal and it'll be automatic. It's like, Ooh, look at that. I'm successful now. Yeah. Somehow I'm more worthy. That's identity. And that's not even true because you're, we're not, we're not who we think we are. Even if we think positively, like that's even not who we are. We're actually way beyond that. We're like in the realm of infinite potential. I mean, you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, number one bodybuilder, number one movie actor, now the governor of California. I mean, he was whoever he decided he wanted to be, right? And so like to think about this, like we really are infinite potential. Like it's, it's a place that's difficult to access and I slip into it from time to time where you're like recognizing all thoughts and all these things. But okay, so here's the thing. If success isn't personal, then why do it? And my answer is because being successful feels really, really good. How do you define success? Things work. Mm. Money pours in. The struggle Custom. isn't happening as much. Stru absence of struggle. Mm -hmm. You got a product that just nails what a customer really, really wants. And they're so happy to buy it from you. You know, success feels really, really good. Walk us through your entrepreneurial my... journey. What's I'm that? sorry, I, I was talking over no, your no. name. So repeat that and then walk us through your entrepreneurial journey. How'd you get started? How did you learn what to train on, right? You mentioned a couple of different coaches. Let's talk about those too. But yeah, I would love to hear, I'd love to hear that, that arc, if you will. Okay, so there's an inner agenda in me when I start a business. And it turns out that inner agenda actually ruins the business. <laughs> okay. Mm. okay. <laughs> like it just ruins it. It ruins it. <laughs> okay. Cause my inner agenda is prove myself, be the sexiest, most sexually viral man alive. You know, like, you know, it sounds like king. Terry. Just kidding. <laughs> What's that? So it sounds like Terry. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe every healthy male's, aspects yeah. of psyche like exactly. every, every, yeah <laughs> or maybe not maybe maybe terry you and i are the the two unhealthy folks you know but <laughs> e even if we are those are all identities <laughs> i just called my coffee a sexy beast earlier so i don't you know my yes. definition of sexy i don't even understand it anymore i mean if people really if, if even if i like i really struggle to believe i'm sexy and i'm and i'm like that's actually something i'm actually like really trying to work on now is like what do i actually believe about my sexuality and those thoughts are 
whispers in the background that hold all this power and I don't want to get close to those whispers because what if they're true and oh, so let's get close and see wait they're not true holy shit everything's okay ah so like that's the repeated process that I'm working through but if as you know if we really like if you like listening like if we really believe that you were like sexy like be interesting to see what would happen to your business productivity because mm-hmm. sex creation sexuality is creation business is creation um so in my personal journey um, I started off with my own agenda and I started selling like a, 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 a there's an open source product called, so I'll turn my brain into the more like we're going to go into like a high RPM state. Uh, like I built software as a service companies and I built like these tech companies and like, um, and they were really, really fun to build. And so people will ask me like, so what did you build? You know, and I could say, well, like, oh, I built a software company, but the idea is not what makes it cool how I built it is what makes it cool. Like if you ask like, you know, like Rockefeller, how did Rockefeller make his money? Oil? Absolutely not. There were hundreds and hundreds of people all in oil. It was how Rockefeller approached it that made all the difference in the world. And if you look at the things that Rockefeller did, he was doing stuff that other people weren't doing. He was like looking at his financial numbers and shutting down factories if they weren't profitable. Could you imagine the turmoil it would take to shut down a factory? Rockefeller, nope, numbers don't work. Shut the factory down. He was the original managed by spreadsheet guy. Yeah, well, there were spreadsheets weren't existing. So how right. we do it? So I built, I built, um, I built a, a intranet products for real estate companies using Joomla, which is like a WordPress open source oh, yeah. platform. Back in yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, back in the day. Mm-hmm. And so like I used Joomla, and then I was cold calling forever, selling my agenda. And then I had the epiphany when someone was like, "Listen, I don't want your product, but I do want this." I was like, oh, why do you want this? And he's like, oh, it's because it's all I think about. I was like, oh, why aren't I selling things that people actually think about? <laughs> you know? So I start asking people, so what do you think about on a day-to-day in life? Like, what's, like, let's try it out. So Janet, what are some of the things that, like, what are the things that you think about on a day-to-day basis in your business? Uh, what are some things? Well, just getting through through, you know, each client, that kind of thing. Um, but the other thing that like lately I'm building on my own online funnel, like a giant, ginormous one. And, yeah. and it's so many layers. So every day I wake up, I'm like, I got to get a step closer on this funnel. I got to get a step closer on this funnel. So that's like my side gig, but then I have the client's work, which has been crazier than ever. Like a lot of yeah. businesses that are hurting right now, but not, I mean, mine is yeah. just crazier than ever right now with um, how much is coming in. So just trying to stay, stay positive and, you know, motivated to get it all done each day. So you're, you're, you're suffering from the problem of success, if you will. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I'm getting my hair colored this afternoon and I don't care. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. you know, I'm taking a little personal time. You know what I mean? So it's like, but yeah, but then that means I have to work on Saturday. Okay. Well, this means a lot that you're sharing this and it's a unique, it's a, it's a rather unique syndrome that I don't think people get a lot of support with is like, how do you handle success? Cause there, you can have the, you can have two, there was Robert Kiyosaki said, you can have two problems. One is the problem of not enough money. And the other is the problem of too much money. And when you have a lot of money, it can be quite stressful unless you have a system to make it, keep it, multiply it, give it mm-hmm. the four yep. things you should wrap around money. But, mm. um, I want to say, so what you're thinking about is just getting through your client work. So just, just, just murking in the shadows of Janet's life are probably three to 10 product ideas that we could create that Janet would love to pay for. Cause right now she's under stress. You're under stress right now. You have a lot of demands on your time. And so the problem of success create is creating some some tension in your life and if we went into that and asked questions around it i'm sure we could find a product idea that you would be happy to pay for um Mm -hmm. and so that's really cool and and um and that that process is well we can we can just actually we could try it and see what happens um but but in the interest of time i that that might not be the best use of time because there are some things that um i think are important to talk about we can come back to it um but so, uh, Terry, you said, take me through your journey. So I, I cold called and then basically the guy told me what he wanted. And so then I, I started saying, okay, 
here's the questions you should ask. You can ask, ask your customers this and the world will open. What's the most important activity in your business? How do you go about that activity? What are the problems associated with that activity? And then you'll find, you'll, you'll find the, the big heck yes products by doing that. So if I ask a real estate company this, they say recruiting real estate agents. That's our number one activity. We want to recruit real estate agents. And I say, so how do you go about it? And they start telling you and you're like, that doesn't sound very pleasant. And then, you know, you're like, okay, what, what, like, what would your dream solution be here? And they're like, God, I wish I could just have X, Y, Z. And then there's your product. It's, it's, it's truly that simple. What's your most important activity? How do you go about it? What's your dream solution? There are actually five questions. So in the book of the seven learning adventures and the three little rocks, the first rock is um, the question you want to ask yourself every day to make sure you get rich. And that question is, did I build any equity today? Right. Most of us are technicians trading time for money, but entrepreneurs trade time for ownership. Ownership meaning that money will come in when you stop working, that kind of equity. If you build equity every single day, imagine the wealth in 10 years. So that's the first little rock. The second little rock is the cardinal rule of successful entrepreneurship. And in that rock, we say, and we try to like, this deserves a meditation. We don't get to decide what works. And I can just feel myself want to cry you know, the parts of me that are like intention, like I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. No, you're not. You are. No, I'm going to figure it out. No, no. Why don't you just open your heart and listen? Ah, people will see me. No, no. Why don't you open your heart and listen? People aren't going to want to tell me about their problems. Why don't you open your heart and listen? I, I, I'm not worthy of, of solving a problem for someone. I got to come up with my own idea. And then you start exploring your psyche and you're like, holy crap, what the heck's driving me? So you got the second rock, which is um, we don't get to decide what works. And then the third rock is on how to handle uh, jealousy with other business owners because it happens a lot mm. and it's not really talked about in business books. And I spent a lot of time jealous. And this is after I, I, so I built two seven figure companies. One of them was an Inc 5,000 fastest growing company. I still didn't feel any better about myself. Even at that plateau, I was still looking around jealous. So I tell you what, jealousy is important. And the way that you handle jealousy is with open hearted curiosity. And you look at the people you're jealous of, and ask what you actually admire about that person that you're jealous of. And you'll see, oh, that person's like all in. And I'm not really all in because I'm scared to be all in. So I just kind of attack them instead. Oh, I admire that they're all in. Ooh. So like pick the people you're jealous of and ask what you admire about them. So you got these three rocks, right? Did I build any equity today? Ask that if, if, as, as many times as you can. Um, then you want to say, okay, we don't get to decide what works. And that means we sit down with huge hearts and listen. And then you've got, how do you handle jealousy? Because we all have jealousy, get tr triggers. Most of us do. And then after that, you go on the next six learning adventures. And adventures two and three, you learn about what you do need and don't need to start a business. And what you do need is the identity shift. That's what's really required. Because if you have internal identity conflicts around entrepreneurship, every time like, like the identity piece is honestly, I think it's the, the linchpin of it all. And I say honestly, cause I'm still figuring this out as I'm going. That's my most honest that I can think of. And it's like, if so I've got this process that we created called the DJP framework, where you articulate your difficult action, you remove the judgment you have of it being difficult. So you stop beating yourself up over it. Then you look at the pattern of where else that thing shows up. Then under DJP, the identity will start to emerge and you can look at the identity. So um, Janet, you could actually do it, difficult action, managing all my clients. Judgment, many people struggle managing all their clients. How nice is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only one, is that? Yeah, because no, right. our identity is just like, to just, I'm gonna wait, wait, our identity is like, some of our days are waiting to beat us up. It's waiting to beat us up. Oh, ha, ha, you suck at this, wait. A lot of people suck at that. Oh, then the identity is like, wait, I still want to beat you up. You know? So then you go to pattern and then you look at where, where that pattern also emerges. So 
Um, and then underneath that, you look for identity. Now, this is what you do need is the identity shift. So in this case, I'm talking to someone and they really struggle to get on sales calls. So their difficult action is getting on sales calls. Let's remove the judgment. A lot of people struggle to get on sales calls. You're like, oh, wow, that does something really nice in the mind. All right, let's look at the pattern. For life of me, I can't remember what his pattern was. But then when we look for the identity, he said, ah, oh, I'm a wantrepreneur. Oh. And I said, right? And I was like, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So that's close, but that's a word that you were taught by someone. What was it that you were feeling before you were taught that word? And he said, oh, and he started crying. And he said, oh, I'm a failure hmm. as an entrepreneur. And if anybody here re re resonates with that, as I resonate with that, as he resonated with that, know that that feeling is very real, that you feel like a failure and it ain't true. Real, but not true. So hold it with all the love you would a child. Failure as an entrepreneur. So he started like tearing up and he just touched the identity without trying to change it, without trying to fix it, without trying to correct it, without trying to do anything, just other than holding it. A lot of us try to do something with our thoughts when they just want to be held. And you're like, no, but then I got to feel it. Well, then hold that. No, but then, I, then I'll feel good. I don't want to feel good. Wait, no, then hold that. Hold it all. So um, he gets on his next sales call. And he says, the guy said, you're one of the best salesmen I've ever talked to. He didn't read any sales books, new sales books. He didn't read any new sales tactics. He worked and shifted the inner identity of him, a failure. And his next sales call, the guy literally said, you're one of the best salesmen I've ever talked to. What you do need is DJPI. Look at, look at the difficult action. Remove the judgment. Look at the pattern for where it emerges. Find the inner identity. Hold it all. So what you do need is that, is the identity. Then once you have that, you work into building what are the four brains of an entrepreneur, the four brains of a profitable creating entrepreneur. Now, most entrepreneurs, we have one or two of these brains. Some of us have three, but if you have all four of them, you are just like this effortless, profitable creator. Those four brains are the surveyor, the tiller, the planter, and the gardener. You survey and find the best land. You go out and till the land. Then you plant the seeds and you grow those plants. So you've got the surveyor, the tiller, the planter, the gardener. This is the more tactical aspect of the mm -hmm. entrepreneur. If you have all four of these, you do so well. Most people get away with just one or two or three of them. But having all four is incredible because you can not only find the proper land, then you know how to actually treat the land to prepare it for planting. Then you know exactly the proper seeds to plant for the best plants. And then you know the proper, proper rules of gardening. You can't don't overwater a plant. You got to plant them in certain rows. You got to like take care of stuff. Which weeds do you cut? Which weeds do you keep? Animals come in. There are certain roles in gardening that make gardening very successful in there, but there are a lot of roles that are just a waste of time. Surveyor, tiller, planter, gardener. So in surveyor, surveyor is akin to finding the, uh, is how you would survey an income stream. When it comes to finding and surveying an income stream, an income stream is broken down into four components, a customer, a pain, a solution, and an offer. So if we look at a really popular service like FreshBooks, this is an online invoicing software for entrepreneurs. FreshBooks, mm -hmm. many people know it. Customer, small business owners. Pain, manual invoicing. Solution, automated invoicing. Offer, 15 to $50 a month. Boom. Crystal clear income stream articulated in under 10 seconds. Most entrepreneurs can't do that. If you can see PSO, customer pain solution offer your business. And then we talk about doing the reps and obsessive training. Imagine if you did customer pain solution offer for a hundred different businesses on a sheet of paper. That would be doing your reps. That would be mm. building an excellent surveyor brain. Because if you look at customer small businesses uh, who send invoices, who trade time send invoices, the pain is manual invoicing. Let's feel this for a moment. Feel this. Customer works for you. Or uh, you, let's say I work for you, Janet. And then say, okay, I track my time. That just feels terrible. 
then I have to like open up a Word doc, right? I'm like, okay, where's my Word doc? Ah, <sighs> sucks. Okay, type in the hours, type in this, calculate them out for her. Okay, get this, save as PDF. <laughs> ah, okay, open, open email, type in Janet, email it to Janet. Okay, the pain doesn't stop there because now Janet gets the email. She's like, great, a manual invoice. Oh my God. And then she opens the email and she's got to click on it to see the invoice. And she looks at it and then there's no real easy way to pay. So then she's got to go over into PayPal, send in PayPal or do a bank wire. The feelings are like, in me, like pure rage for the inefficiency of that. Like just <laughs> rage, like what the are we doing with our sacred time that we'll never get back doing manual invoices. Uh, then you've got automated that's invoicing, great. right? Automated invoicing, type in Janet, type in my hours. It's already got my hourly rate automatically calculated and boom, fires off an email automatically. Hey, hey Janet, Dane work for you. This the invoice is $1,200. Click here to pay. She clicks on the email pays. It's tracked. If she doesn't pay five days later, Hey, reminder, you haven't paid. That is a tremendous benefit from manual to automated. And if you take time to feel that, and then you say offer 15 to $50 a month. Now I was on a interview the other day and we were going through the book and the guy halfway through the interview said, hold on, stop. I'm going to, I got to buy your book right now. And he bought the book live on the podcast. He's like, I've never done this before. And it, <laughs> it was so fun because the, what got him to buy the book was realizing that an income stream could be broken down so simply into customer pain solution offer. If that's in there, what else was in the book? So he did that now, but what also happened is he's what I would call, he'll probably never listen to this. He's a little erratic as an entrepreneur, like not as articulate as he could be. Like, is he, is he meditating to center himself? Is he, is he carefully clearing his mind so he can clearly articulate his thoughts once and be done? Or is he feeling like going to repeat himself like he's in a glass box? Like, is he doing that kind of work? I don't know. So, but uh, a, a little bit like, it's kind of everywhere. So he's like, I've launched this new business. It's going really well. It's blowing up. And I was like, all right, well then let's look, let's just, let's just do customer pain solution offer for it. What's your customer? So we got our small businesses. What's the pain? Oh, the digital advertising, you're not good at it. What's the solution? SEO, PPC, digital advertising. What's the offer? Oh God, it varies. Varies, it's all many things. Okay, that's what he did, all right? Just blah. So now we go back and forth for like 10 minutes. Or what's your solution? SEO, nope, that's a feature, it's not a solution. What's your solution? PPC, nope. It's a feature. It's not a solution. Mm. What's the solution? So customer, small business owners with the desire to advertise who have the ability to write a check. That's the customer. Pain. Don't understand online digital advertising. May have tried before. Probably lost money on digital advertising. Mm -hmm. What's the solution? A tested and rigorous system that can reliably turn advertising dollars into profit and customers. What's the offer? $500 to $10,000 a month, depending on the solutions they need added to their business. I mean, you tell me which business wait, sounds like it's going to be more successful. So wait, you're a guest on his podcast and basically straightened out his business model for him. Is that what I'm understanding? Cause that's kind of sweet. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, but I mean, I don't think he was having any issues growing it, but maybe he was comparatively, but that's right. He'll have mm -hmm. less issues now is basically what I'm hearing from this part. I and I take it this is your book. This is all yes, inside your book. Adventure four is the four brains. Okay. Surveyor, tiller, plant. Now the tiller has a five question process to find, till the land and find the seeds to plant. And then the planter is what's called like the humble product creator and the humble product creator is incredible. Like, cause a humble product creator is like, I don't know. Let's find out. And a humble product creator could create like a three feature product that like a PhD expert would turn their nose at. 
But that three feature product customers are like, thank God it's this easy. Here's my money. Yes. yes. Humility is profitable. Yeah, Humility is very, very profitable. You know, I have so much arrogance that I find where like, I'm like, I th- like I'll create this whole sophisticated like training and the person will actually want help with and even possibly pay with pay for how to buy a domain name and hook it up. Now I could have two responses to that. I could have unconscious arrogance and pride, or I could have love for where they are and actually help with that. So, and if you want to build businesses that you don't have to work in, what we do is we want to immediately stop being an expert. In order to stop being an expert, we start looking at customer pain solution offer because nowhere in customer pain solution offer for FreshBooks did we say we had to be the expert at automated invoicing. Matter of fact, Elon Musk isn't building his cars. He's not building his spaceship and Jeff Bezos isn't building his mechanisms either. Entrepreneurs aren't the experts building their products. The, the ones I'm talking about, mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. are, they are owning the business and the outcome. So like the, the most interesting niche example that I have now that I've been mentioning on a few shows is let's, let's say customer, a parrot owner. The pain is the parrots pooping around the house. It's biting the owner and it's biting their friends. And it's even maybe cussing, you know, just embarrassing the owner, right? The solution is a parrot training program to get your parrot to behave. The offer is then two or 300 bucks for the training. So that's our customer pain solution offer. Now, what do you do with that? If you've developed the heart of an entrepreneur, you'll go out and find a parrot trainer and you'll ask them and you'll say, Hey, would you like to put a, together a parrot training program to help parrots stop pooping all over the owner's house and stop biting everybody? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know how to do that. It's actually really easy to do. And you're like, oh, great. Um, so I'll, sh- I'll come over with my iPhone and you'll just, we'll just record it real quick and you'll do like five, six videos or whatever it is. I'll give you 20% of the profit of all sales from the business and all you got to do is teach. He says, okay, great. And now you stepped into the realm of unlimited entrepreneurship is no longer a struggle. This is how Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be. Holy crap. Does this feel good? And that is how you build a business. You don't have to work in. So the way that I built my wealth was with software as a service because software as a service is the very lucrative, Holy grail of income online. There's a reason Russell Brunson started click funnels. There's a reason Clay Collins started lead pages. Clay Collins and Russell Brunson are brilliant businessmen brilliant marketers why are they in software clay clay sold it now but (laughs) did he sell lead pages yeah yeah it's a minneapolis based company so yeah i know those guys yeah clay and i were in a mastermind together back in the day and he's a very smart you just want to sit in front of him and listen Mm -hmm. Um, but clay had arrogance about lead pages and i interviewed him on it And he talked about how his customers, he would give out free HTML templates. He'd give these out. And then people are like, thanks for the templates. How do you FTP? What do I do with this HTML code? And Clay would be like, what do you guys want from me? I'm giving you a free HTML template. And now you're asking for you. What do you guys want? I'm already giving you stuff free. And he was upset for a while. And then he had that. Oh, okay. I'll give him a button to push. So he gave lead pages and it blew up. Most of the entrepreneurs that are in their really, really big businesses that I know, quite a few of them, not all of them, quite a few. I'm thinking of three specific examples that I know for sure, but I think other entrepreneurs would believe, would, would say this. They were asked for what they wanted. They were asked for uh, what, and they like resisted and then they built it and it worked. They get at like even Slack, like that wasn't their idea. They were trying to build a video game and then to talk back and forth for the video game. They built this little chat tool. Nobody wanted the video game. That reminds me of Blab. What's that? Gary, oh, you know, because the Blab, they, they had their mindset on that this is what it would be. They had people like mm. going, We're, we love this product. We love it. And they, we, want, we would have paid for it. Like there was a lot of variables, but then they just walked away and closed it down because probably because of exactly what you're talking about. Because they didn't, they didn't listen, right? They exactly. didn't take it to the next level. And, you know, you start looking at server costs and how expensive it is to stream video with multiple people on it at one time. And you're like, well, 
you know, we're doing this really well, but uh, it's costing us too much money because we haven't figured out how to make a business. Yep. Out of it. That's exactly it. But then there came along Zoom, which we were just talking about and Blab could have been Zoom and, you know, so very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and very get, interesting. And that, and that gets, so that gets like to the Venture 4 and then you get a Venture 5, 6, and then 7. Mm. 7 is the, uh, the Halls of Transformation. And in the halls of transformation, there's 15 of those entrepreneurs and each one of those entrepreneurs sitting right next to their transformation story is a 26 factor analysis of their personality. So you can look underneath the hood of all these entrepreneurs that are now successful. You can see their level of organization, their level of diligence, their level of prudence, their level of social self-esteem, their level of fearfulness, their level of anxiety, their level of gentleness, their level of forgivingness, their level of fairness, their level of altruism. And you can actually look at 15 entrepreneurs and see uh, how fearful they are, how all these kinds of things, how honest they think they are, how much, how comfortable are they expressing greed? It's pretty cool. Um, and that's a venture seven and then you got venture five and six. But this book was my gift to the world that I don't like in terms of like, clearly I have some aptitude for this business stuff. But when I say I do, is it really me or is this a gift I've been given? How can I not take this personal so I don't get too wrapped up in this knowledge that I have? And I can then, in terms of giving myself permission to be great, one of the best ways I can do that is to not take my gifts so personally and just use them. Well, let's get into the book. We're close on time. So let, tell us the name of the book and where people can find you. <laughs> we, we, didn't even take to, we didn't even say the title. I know. We haven't even said the title. So <laughs> it, now, start, yeah, it starts exactly. with zero. We, told, we said the title. Did start we say it? Zero. Okay. Uh, it, yeah, well, from, let me ask you. Is it start from zero? Yes, sir. Start oh. from zero.com and start from zero book. and uh, Not start from zero book, but start from zero.com. Um, start from zero.com. Okay. Yeah. Build your own business experience, true freedom. And then in the top left corner of the book, it's like no ideas, no experience, no confidence, no da da da. Who cares? Start from zero. <laughs> Start from zero. Very good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Title. And this is available now, that. correct? On Amazon um, and everywhere. It's it's it releases March thirty first. If it's not that day yet, but please oh, do pre order it. That helps. We us probably a lot. will be perfect on timing because this is a couple of weeks out. So good. And, and good. What it's what I'd also say is um, also don't buy the book unless you know you want to read it. So check out an excerpt and I've got a free excerpt that you can find and there's no email capture for the excerpt. Just read the excerpt. If you like the excerpt, then pick up the book. And where can they get that on the website? So it'll be start from zero.com forward slash. Well, I've got a couple other URLs that are close to yours. Yours is the business growth podcast name. Business, business growth, growth time. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. How, start from zero.com forward slash time. Okay. T-I-M-E special URL just for you guys. I'll get it set up. And okay. people go there and they'll find that. There's also, I got a great podcast that where I mentor people. I told them exactly how to make money. Oh, cool. So they'll What's come that? on the show. That's a, you'll see it at start from zero. It's called start okay. from zero. Very good. Um, I'll start from zero. Awesome. Name. Okay, cool. But the way, the way that I created the name, I didn't really create it. I tuned into sort of, I'd call it etheric quantum sense, like the sensitive realm. And I kind of heard start from zero. I was like, that's what I'll steward. That'll be the name. And then I'll steward that through. Um, and, you know, John Mayer talks about how he'll write songs doing that. He's like, you know, just let it come through. And that's, that's was like, that's thing I picked. And if you ever had an idea and then you don't do it and then you see it out in the world, you're like, I had that idea. I was like, well, yeah, ideas aren't personal either. They kind of float around. You can choose to steward them or not. Um, and, you know, if it sticks with you for a while and then it'll leave and go to someone else, this kind of whole notion is kind of a, in the, in like Elizabeth Gilbert, Eat, Pray, Love talked about it in her Ted talk, which was really cool. But um, the Start From Zero brand is, is, well, it's the book, podcast, and then I'm actually going to start creating a yearly Start From Zero Academy where we will show people how to obsessively train over and over again and do the reps. They'll build th three businesses in four months just to practice. Forget trying to get it right the first time. Just practice until you get it. Um, that'll be, we'll do the, we'll, tr we'll intentionally trigger you, intentionally bring up your identity, intentionally make you uncomfortable. Like we'll actually try to do that. Um, but the podcast is pretty cool. Cause you know, I got like an 80 year old comes on. He's like, I'm 80 and I want to make two grand a month. What should I do? And I was like, what's your experience level? He's like, I don't Very have any good. experience. And I was like, okay, here's what I would do then. Um, 
And Very cool. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, that. Gene, there... hold on, hold on. Yeah. Dan, I rarely do this, right? Um, yeah. In fact, I can think of one time I've done it. It was with Chris Brogan uh, when he was a guest a few years back. Um, every time Janet and I get done with these shows, we spend five minutes shooting the shit about what do we name this episode, right? Mm. And so during the course of this particular one, I actually jotted down some notes. So I'm going to bounce some ideas off of you and I'm going to let you help us choose the name for this particular yeah, great. episode. Are you game? Yes, yeah, sounds good. Cool. So the first one I've got is open your heart and listen because that really resonated with me and sounded like such sage advice. Um, the second one I've got is Zen leadership in business growth. Really, I really just felt that so strongly through. Um, I've got build equity every day. I think that was just mm -hmm. so bang on. Uh, and then the last one I've got, and it's probably uh, super on brand, it's how to start from zero. So if you had to pick what we would name the show, and I'll open this up to both of you, what, uh, what do you think you should do? Janet's cutting her teeth with Facebook ads 20 at a time. <laughs> what, are you, what, do you, what do you think? I actually, the last one stood out to me because it uses the zero word, but because that's what yours is. It's, yeah, it's, like, it's a parallel to what your book is. I mean, I like, I like that start from zero. Um, but you could also do like, stop trying to be impressive, start listening and get really, 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 really rich. That mm -hmm. kind of like that kind of theme, like um, how, uh, what's, what's listen, L I S T six, a six letter word that will make you very rich. Mm, I see what you're going doing there. And that would yep. be listen, the six letter word that will make you very rich. I bet you'll get almost everyone to listen to that one. That's a good one. Very good. This is awesome. Well, I suppose we're still live. We're still on, so we can end the show here. Yeah. Um, you can find all our, our past podcast episodes at businessgrowthtime.com slash podcasts. And also this will be out. You'll be hearing this early April, more than likely. Uh, this will be coming out. So Dane's book is available on Amazon when you're listening to this. And then we also have a Facebook group too. You can join that mm -hmm. at businessgrowthtime.com. What is that? X, Y, Z. Why can X, I never y, remember? Because it's the stupidest domain name ever. But anyway, dot X, Y, Z. And uh, we'd love to have you there too. So thank you so much, Dane, for coming on our show. We appreciate it. Wow, that was just a packed full. I mean, I almost need to just go listen to it again on my own because well, I don't take notes when I'm you know, doing this. So I feel like I need to take notes. Or I just go get your book. That's probably the easier thing to do. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, you, Thank you. You Dean. sold you sold at least two copies today, man. I, yeah. I will definitely buy that. I'm I'm intrigued. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank you both very much. All right. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon.